that's the core of of what they do. The Hasidic Jews, you know, the guy with the curls and the hats, they're Has- they're Kabbalists. That's they follow the Kabbalah. So do here we go. A lot of the Hebrew roots followers follow the Kabbalah. Um, and so, Tony, please um, give my regards to your friend. And um, I love her, too, and I thank God for her. I I spoke with, um, I won't say who it was, someone yesterday, um, because this person I know to be a completed Jew. They were They were raised Jewish. They were born Jewish. Um, they, she uses Jesus. She would call him Yeshua because that was the language that she was given. Um, and I told her, I said, I'm not coming out against you. Don't think that she said, I know I got you and so on. So please don't, uh, to the, to this Jewish lady, I'm not referring to you. You are a Jew. And I, I think I'd love you for that. You're God's people, the seed of Abraham. But as far as the Old Testament or the Hebrew mindset at, at or around the time of Christ or even before that, uh, those people, they listen, Jesus said, go read what, what Jesus himself said to his people in Matthew 23. He said, you killed every prophet that God sent to you. You hated their guts. And then they killed Jesus. That's the mindset that I won't adopt, that I won't, that I won't uh, coddle to. Tracy, hi, Pastor Mike. My daughter started attending church with her husband as a Reformed Presbyterian church. Let me say that she was raised Southern Baptist. Her husband was transferred to Texas, so she's starting to go into church with him. Recently, they had their children, quote-unquote, baptized, sprinkled. And I said, why? This is not biblical. Her response was that it is entering into a family covenant with God. Again, I said, that's not biblical. She quoted the following verses for household baptism. The cases where household baptism is strongly implied is that of of uh, Cornelius, Acts chapter 10, verse 47 through, and you know, I the Bible does say, you know, in his house. The three definite cases of household baptisms are those of Lydia, the Philippine jailer, and Stephanus. Help, how do I respond? Thanks so much. You, you respond with scripture, okay? You always respond with scripture. The scripture will explain, scripture upholds scripture, will do everything in the world for scripture. Scripture is the scripture's best friend. Scripture doesn't need non-scripture help. So in Acts chapter 8, verse 37, here's the thing. Um, If a baby is baptized, sprinkled, ask the parents, does this baby believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Does this baby believe that? And you see, it's the idea that if we baptize the baby, see, this is a, a dangerous idea. If we baptize the baby... They're going to be a Christian all their life because they're baptized that way. And I know people who lived their whole lives thinking, I was baptized. I was baptized Catholic. I was baptized Lutheran. I was baptized when I was a child. I'm a Christian. They lived their whole life that way. And they will die and go to hell because they're in their sins. They have not they've not done anything by faith. Acts chapter 8 verse 37, which is incidentally missing out of all the other Bibles except the King James. Philip said uh, the, the 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 eunuch asked in verse 36, see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest. The Bible is given you a requirement for baptism. You must believe with all your heart. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he baptized him. Babies don't know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And they can't believe it. Therefore, they shouldn't be baptized. You baptize them all day long if you want to. We used to baptize each other when we were kids down at the lake, going swimming. Ah, let me baptize you. Ah, I got pretty good at it. Uh, Tim sends me a very, very, very long article. Uh, doctors turn to party drug and search for new depression treatments. I've heard of that. They're using, uh, what is it? What party drug is that? Vitamin K, Kit Kat, K? I don't know what that is. Ketamine as a new antidepressant. It just makes you happy. Well, I'm sure it does. I appreciate that. Bill! Pastor Mike, I continue praying for spiritual wickedness to leave this country. 
Good for you. But on the other hand, I remind myself of the people who misguide other people that fall into this category. He who knows not doesn't know that he knows not is a lost fool. Thank you once again for sticking to your guns, maintaining a solid stance with the King James Bible. Bill, I, I listen, I don't like the country I live in. But I also would say, and it's like I told people when Obama won the second election, you know what? It's time that Christians start being Christians. It's time that we roll our sleeves up and go to work. And it's time that we stop expecting the government and our society to maintain the standards and the morality that it's supposed to be up to the church to do that, not the world. And so, appreciate that. Carla, regarding eating pork, who is Isaiah 65? Let me turn my can here of King James. Isaiah 65. Let's read the scripture before I read anything else. Isaiah 65, verse 3. 65, verse 3. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth, sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the mountains, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things, is in their vessels. Uh, let's see here. In verse 2, I have spread out my hands all day unto a rebellious people. He's talking to Israel. That's who he's talking to. Okay? So, let me finish reading your email. Regarding eating pork, who is Isaiah 65, 3-4 to four, speaking of? which eat swine's flesh and blah, blah. I don't hold to Jewish traditions either because I believe as you do that the New Testament does not teach us as such. But how could he be speaking of the Jews here? They do not eat swine. Thanks. You know, that's interesting. Um, you know what? You say that they do not eat swine, but apparently, according to here, they did. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. That's Israel. And so while we say that they don't eat pork, apparently they were doing it here. That's what I would say to that. All right? Anyway. Dan Bourne. Uh, and by the way, as far as eating pork, the New Testament is very clear. God didn't change the commandment. He cleaned the animal. That's what he did. God can do that. Uh, Dan Bourne uh, says, Hi, Pastor Mike. There's also the mezuzah at every door in every house or business or court in Israel. And although it carries a message from Deuteronomy uh, 1, I, or Deuteronomy, I believe, it, doesn't it also strike more as a tradition over Scripture as they kiss it on their entering in and on their exit out of the door? Um, it not only is a message from Deuteronomy, but it's also what God said in Deuteronomy um, uh, chapter, what is it, chapter 4, chapter 6, uh, and that's to, to post the scriptures on, on the doorposts and on the entryways and so on, to bind them as a sign upon thine hand and to be frontlets between the eyes and so on. Um, and I would, I would agree with you, Dan, that... Um, Practically everything the Jew does right now is by way of tradition only and by way of works, thinking that if I kiss this thing or if I do this, then I'm getting God on my side. And God clearly has a message for Israel, and that is it's faith, buddy. Because you, can, you and I both know that we can perform rituals and functions all day long and not mean anything by them. It doesn't mean anything if it's not with faith. Um, Zathnath Pa'inia, who is contrary to me at times, says, true or false, Jesus is a transliteration and not a translation from the Hebrew to the Greek. Are not translated words hybrids of two languages to create an entirely different word? Now, you're assuming that I have to answer this question the way you posed it. True or false? I don't. All I have to do, Zafnath Pa'ania, who, that's not your real name, and that's how you write me, and I don't know who you really are. You know my real name. Here's what it breaks down to, Zaf. 
it breaks down to do you believe this or not it's what it it's what it all boils down to do you believe this or not this this book the words that are on these pages here says this while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And thou shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Your question, Zaph, is irrelevant to what this book says. And so the sacred name people love to ask non-biblical questions to trap people into believing that they're saying, hey, Zeus, and they're not. It's a lie. It's a fabrication. They say, because look, it looks like and sounds like, hey, Zeus. Well, Moses looks and sounds like mouse, but it's not the same. Did Zaf, did God ever say that he was going to speak in another tongue? And the answer is yes. Did he fulfill that? Boy, did he. He not only spake in one, he spake in at least 17 that we know of in the book of Acts chapter 2. And when Paul quoted Isaiah 28, he said, With men of other tongues and other languages will I speak to this people. And his name, because, and here's Zaf, here's what you, I don't know if you know this or not. There is no shh in the Greek alphabet. There's nothing for that. They never, the Greeks never said shh. They didn't have that in their, in their tongue. So God allowed them by his grace and by his sovereignty and by his love for them and by his desire that they would know the truth of the gospel without having to turn into Jews and to do things that they didn't know how to do, God decided to do it on their level. So when the word Yahshua, which has a shin in it, goes into the Greek language, there is no way, it is impossible for the Greeks to even have an, a concept of the sh sound because they don't have it in their vocabulary. It's not in their alphabet. So this took the letter sigma and put it in there. And then, of course, because Greek has gender words in it, masculine, feminine, neutral. And they knew that Jesus wasn't a chick, and they knew that Yeshua wasn't an it. They had to put the sigma on the end of it to show that it was a guy's name. That's masculine. Jesus. And God then signified that to show that I'm going to speak in other languages here. Because Pilate nailed up on the cross exactly what his name was in Hebrew, Yahshua. And then he had him write it in Greek, Jesus. And then he had it write it in Latin, Jesus. And it's still the name of Jesus. And so your question, true or false, is it a transliteration or a translation? The question, my friend, Zaf, is irrelevant. It has no meaning whatsoever. And it denies the scripture. And that's what sacred namers do. They deny the written, preserved word of God. And they try to get you to remove it out of your life so that they can replace it with something else. Listen, I already gave up junk from another life to have it replaced with the King James Bible. I'm not changing it for